All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started. Bear with me since uh, I don't have a clicker. I'm going to have to be kind of looking at my screen a little bit here and there. But uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Roger Lopez. Um, today I'm going to be giving you a presentation around backup and recovery of OpenStack, specifically your overcloud, and talking a little bit about essentially how to back up and recover from a, uh, a failed update. So to kind of give you a, kind of a, an agenda of what I'm going to be covering today, uh, initially we're going to be covering a little bit about the OpenStack environment that I use to do a backup and recovery. Uh, we're going to talk about key differences between updates versus upgrades. A lot of times uh, these words get interchanged. And for, the pre for this presentation, due to time constraints as well as um, talking about updates versus upgrades, we're going to be specifically focusing on updates. Uh, we're going to be talking about the backing up of OpenStack environment with regards to the control plane. Um, so that's going to be including your OpenStack databases, so your MongoDB database, your MariaDB database, your Redis database, and of course all the different OpenStack configuration files. And then finally, how to restore those uh, different OpenStack uh, services on your overcloud. And then the bonus, which I'm not going to be covering, but I added it on the slide deck, if you're running Red Hat OpenStack platform, how do you um, back up and restore your undercloud environment? So to give you a little breakout of what my OpenStack environment consisted of, essentially I had uh, three controller nodes with high availability, four compute nodes, and four Ceph nodes. And each node had four NICs on them, and each NIC had uh, its own um, essentially network associated with it and, and with a VLAN. So if you look at the controller node as an example, I had my controller one, EM1, it was connected to my external network. Uh, EM2 was connected to my provisioning network. Uh, e P3, P1 uh, was actually broken up into two VLANs, one for my tenant network and one for my storage network. And then finally, P3, P2 was for my storage management network. And that kind of just gives you a, a breakout of how the networking was distributed across uh, the different nodes um, for the OpenStack environment that I had. So, Key differences between updates versus upgrades. So a lot of times, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we <coughs> interchange these words. But with regards to updates, I'm referring to in place. With regards to updates, I'm referring to in place of updates of a particular OpenStack version. So in the case of Red Hat, it would be Red Hat OpenStack Platform 8. If you are doing upstream stuff where it's Liberty, you'd be minor minor um, updates of of that version. With regards to upgrades, I would be referring to Red Hat OpenStack Platform 8 to, let's say, Red Hat OpenStack Platform 9, or let's say, Liberty to Mintaka. So in the presentation, I'm only going to be covering um, updates. One of the things to keep in mind is one of the reasons that I'm not covering upgrades is one due to time. And another thing is the, the whole concept of how to back up and restore is similar with regards to if it's either updates versus upgrades. But it's also a little more complicated with upgrades for the simple fact that as services change or get deprecated and you move on to major releases, it's possible that that's the part of it that will compl uh, complicates it. For example, like Solometer moving on to Noki, that's something that rolling back becomes a little more of an issue and something that you have to look at. But since we're focusing on, on updates and in place of, with a specific version, I'm going to show you a breakout on how to do that. So, uh, backing up your over OpenStack environment. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was kind of make a timeline, right? So there's a lot of steps that go involved in backing up, and the last thing you want to do is just kind of jump in and try to figure out what that is. So this is kind of a breakout, five steps. This is how you would back up your overcloud. So I broke it up into backing up your MariaDB, backing up your MariaDB's uh, users and their different permissions, backing up your MongoDB database, which is holding your Solometer information or um, for in the case of OpenStack, uh, Red Hat OpenStack 8, uh, backing up your Redis database, and then, of course, backing up all the different OpenStack configuration files, and then storing all that in some remote location. So the last thing you want to do is back up all this stuff and you leave it somewhere that's <laughs> that you're going to lose that information if you actually have a catastrophic, catastrophic failure, right? So going into the first step, backing up the Galera cluster MariaDB. Well, I kind of broke it out into four steps, A, B, C, and D. So the first one, uh, access the controller node via your root user. Identify which node is being targeted by HA proxy. So one of the reasons that we want to find this out is because when we do the backup, 
if you have multiple controllers, you want to actually make sure that you're using a controller that's idle to do the backup versus, having, versus using a, a controller node that's already doing work in the background. Might as well use one that that's not. And then ensuring all your Galera nodes are synced up in the cluster, right? You don't want to take a backup of one controller node and realize your database is not synced across all your different controller nodes. And um, yeah, and of course, taking that backup, which I, I mentioned a little early. So, um, so what do these steps look like? I kind of put A, B, and B in there, um, kind of just to show that they're in part of the same process. But step A was control, um, accessing your controller node. So essentially here, I'm logging in at SSHing as your heat admin user, and then getting into sudo for root access. And this grep command here, um, looking at the haproxy.config file, what I'm looking for is to see which node, which overcloud controller node is being targeted by haproxy. So when I do this, I can actually see that, hey, the 172.16.1.11 IP address was, is being targeted by haproxy. So what I need to find out is, from with this IP address, which controller node is being accessed. So I can actually use a MySQL command shown here uh, that actually tells you which particular um, controller node is being uh, accessed by that particular host. And for the, here in, I put my, your user, you can actually use any um, OpenStack user. So you can use heat user, glance user, whichever user, as long as you have the password and you can access the database, you can actually find out this information. Or you can go ahead and create your own database user if you want to do that. But you kinda, I kind of left it open that you have options. So once you have the information of, I, OK, I, I know that, um, uh, where, where was I? OK, yeah. So I have the host name. I know which controller is going to be accessed. So what I want to do from that controller zero node is I want to make sure that my other controller nodes are synced up with the database. So in this case, you can do a curl of your overcloud controller one, controller two, in my example, on port 9200. And here, what I'm just trying to verify is that the database is synced across the Galera cluster. right? Once I know this, since I don't want to make a backup on my overcloud controller 0, since that's the one that HAProxy is um, using, um, I'm going to use either controller 1 or controller 2. The option is yours. There's no right or wrong answer there. And then finally, what you want to do is you want to use a, a SQL statement to back up your OpenStack database. So basically, what this MySQL statement is really doing is it's selecting unique um, table schemas from the information schema table and making sure that the storage engine is storage inodb. And you're not taking a backup of the MySQL table schema. And the reason for that is you're going to actually recreate it um, when you're doing the restore process. You're going to essentially have a, a brand new one. And then we're passing all that into using the xargs command, which is essentially going to take in, it reads in standard in streams of data and converts each line to space separated arguments in the command line. And in this case, I'm passing it to the MySQL dump. So it's going to take for every table within your MariaDB and break it out. And then finally, with that, it's going to create this long um, OpenStack underscore database timestamp.sql file, which essentially you're going to replay when you want to restore your MariaDB. So that essentially covers the piece of backing up your MariaDB database. But with that, you don't have the users and their permissions that are associated with that MariaDB. So once again, you need another MySQL statement. And this MySQL statement essentially is just using the concat function in MySQL. And it's essentially ensuring that for all the users on the database that have a length greater than 0, um, once again, I want to pass it to xargs. And with some said manipulation, you're essentially going to get this grants timestamp.sql file that you're going to create. And in here, this is an example below it of what that, grant, what that um, grants uh, timestamp.sql file looks like. So in here, first line, grant usage on star dot star to salometer identified by a password. So that's really just creating your example, in this case, the salometer user, and granting access that you can log into the database. But that's all it does. So the next line is the important one, which is the grant all privileges on essentially the salometer database to the salometer user. And of course, what you want to do is through that SQL, um, through that MySQL uh, query that we're doing and put, 
passing the grants timestamp timestamp.sql file, it's actually going to collect all the different users that are in your MariaDB database and capture that and kind of essentially do what you're seeing here. So in this example, we'll have salometer, glands, heat, but you would see all the different OpenStack services that you would have. Um, so now that you have the MariaDB, you've got your users and permissions, the next step is going to be backing up your MongoDB database. So in Red Hat OpenStack 8, um, essentially MongoDB is storing a lot of the um, telemetry salometer information. And one of the things to keep in mind to do your MongoDB database is you want to ensure that you're making the backup of your database on your primary node, and you want to use MongoDump to do that. And of course, you want to ensure that the backup that was created was essentially uh, is there. So in order to do that, this is kind of the steps to do it. So first thing you want to do is you want to log into your MongoDB database. And in order to log into your MongoDB database, I need to find within my mongod.com file, which is the IP address associated that's connecting to connect to my MongoDB database. So in this case, the, the bind IP is what you're looking for. So in this case, I know 172.16.1.17 is the host to connect to my Mongo database. So next command, this is what, what you do to connect to your Mongo database. You can do this from any controller node. And when you log in, what you're hoping to see is something like triple O underscore primary. So essentially what this is telling you is that, hey, this is the primary node for my Mongo database. This is where you want to make the backup. However, if you see something like this, triple O underscore secondary, this is just another member within your cluster for your Mongo database. And you actually don't want to make the backup here. So what you want to do is you want to find out from within that controller which is the host that is primary. So in this case, if you do rs.status, and rs stands for replica set, it'll give you a list of all the members that are part of the Mongo database. In this example, I kind of give you a little small snippet of which is the primary. So you'll get all this information, and if you notice name, is the one that's giving you the um, IP address and the port associated, which is what we're looking for. And then the state is telling me that this is the one that's primary. So before I was trying to connect to .17, and I realize now that .15 is my primary. So this is the node that I want to use uh, for, my, for my backup. So how do, I, how do I do that actual backup, right? So you want to log into your controller node that has, that has the primary node, right, for your Mongo database. You're going to create it like, a directory that you want to store your backup. And then you're going to use the mongo dump command in order to do the backup. So the mongo dump op logs, which is essentially your operation logs. And this is a special collection that keeps all the rolling records of all the operations um, that modify the data. And then you essentially want to pass your host, your port. And then finally, the dash dash out is where uh, you want to locate your storage backup. So in this case, it would be the directory that you created previously. And then, of course, finally, when you do that Mongo dump, depending on what flavor of OpenStack you're doing, you're going to have, in the case of Red Hat OpenStack 8, it was, you'll have two databases. You'll have the um, admin database, and you'll have a salometer database. So within that location, you want to make sure that you have those two databases stored. So. With the Mongo backup, um, you also have the, next, the last database that you need to backup, which is the Redis database. So the Redis also stores additional, in, in Red Hat OpenStack 8, also stores additional uh, salometer information. And it's mostly used by, um, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, twos library, so kind of for coordination and, and locking. So um, in order to do um, a backup of the Redis database, uh, you want to make sure that it's up and running. There's a command within the Redis client command that's called BG save, which stands for background save. And then you also want to uh, confirm that you've created the database, that it's been backed up. So there's some, a command called last save. And then, of course, uh, uh, check the timestamp when we're doing the backup. So to kind of give you what that looks like. So once you log in, um, the Redis database has uh, the redis.com file has uh, some information that you're looking for. So example, what we're seeing here is uh, the, you want to get the bind IP address and you want the master auth is the password. So using the redis.client command, uh, you're essentially going to dash A, pass the password that's provided from the redis.com file, dash H, pass the IP address of wh which is the database is located, 
and then you're passing the ping command. And the ping command is essentially going to give you a response of Pong. If it gives you a response of Pong, you know that your Redis database is up and running. And then, of course, you want to take the same redis.clan command and use the bg save command. So bg save is going to make a background process to save your database. But, be, before, but you want to make sure that you know that your database was backed up and has finished backing up. So you want to use the, the command, uh, the same Redis client command, but now with last save at the end of it. And this is going to give you a integer value, in this case, like 147 and so forth. And this is just a, like a Unix timestamp. So if you want to figure out what that is in human you know, readability, essentially you can just use the date dash D at that integer value. And it will give you a timestamp of when the last backup occurred for the Redis database. So this way you know that what you're going to back up for Redis has, is what you're expecting. And the last pro process of backing up your OpenStack is all the configuration files. So Depending on what flavor you're on, there's a lot of different services that you need to back up, right? So I kind of give you a manual process of what you need to back up. So all the Etsy service, var log service, var lib service, your Etsy sysconfig memcached, and your serve node. And then essentially you want to just kind of tar all that up and, and store it somewhere remotely. Uh, option two that I kind of put out was in, under that bit.ly link, I have a, essentially a script that I created that will go off onto every overcloud node that you have on your environment and make a backup for all the different services, right? So then when you go and back up, you're putting it for every single, you're putting it back for every single overcloud node that you have in your environment. So that kind of describes what you need in a nutshell, what to do for backup. But before I get into the restore process, everyone here I'm sure has run into some sort of update failure, right? But the reality is you don't necessarily need to do a rollback of your environment because you had a failure, right? A lot of times you'll be able to go in, figure out what this particular error was, and rerun your commands to do the, to do the update or continue the update. If you ever have an issue where you cannot do that and you do need to roll back, this is what these steps are for. So for the restore of the OpenStack environment, I kind of broke it up into the same type of timeline, right? You got Less steps now. I'm giving you four instead of five this time around. But uh, basically, it comes down to step one. You're going to want to roll back any of your YUM transactions. So when you're doing uh, overcloud update, the first thing that it does, is it tries to go into every overcloud node and update all the packages to its newer version, right? So we want to roll back all those um, transactions. We want to then restore the MariaDB cluster, restore the MongoDB database, and then restore the OpenStack configuration files in that targz file, which includes the Redis database, because the Redis database is stored under varlib redis, so that dump file you, you will have. So step one, the rollback. Um, that's where yum history is your best friend. So with the OpenStack timestamp, um, you can use this as a reference to when you, essentially when the, up, when the update was going to happen, right? So, when we backed up OpenStack database timestamp.sql, we had an idea of when we did a backup. Assuming that we did an, an update r right after that, you can kind of use that as a timestamp if you needed to go and check it. But in this example I have here where I did a yum history, it shows that you know system user ID 16, and I had about 77 different uh, packages that were somewhat altered on this particular day and time, and the action was either an install or an update of a package. So this is where you can do a yum history undo of your ID. So I did a history undo of 16, and this rolled back all the packages of my OpenStack environment on the overcloud node. And you have to do this for every overcloud node in your environment. And you ideally would do it one by one to make sure you don't have any issues with a particular rollback. And um, this will get you back to the point in time that you were uh, prior to doing uh, your back, uh, when you did your backup. So the restore process for the Galera cluster is kind of long, actually. And I, I put all the steps out here. But what I'm going to do is instead of describing all these steps through bullet points, I'm going to describe the steps through actual the commands that I ran. So. The first thing I wanted to do to restore the MariaDB was to essentially go into one of my controller nodes, get in as a, as a root user again, 
And once again, I wanted to figure out uh, which uh, controller node was being targeted by HA proxy, right? So in this case, I, as we knew earlier, it's 172.16, 1.11. And then what I want to do is I want to disable all my OpenStack services that are not running Galera. So if we go here, it will vary depending on which OpenStack version you're running. But in the case of Red Hat OpenStack 8, when you disable OpenStack Keystone, you actually disable a lot of OpenStack service dependencies. And then once I've done that, the following PCS resource disable has all these different other uh, services that uh, are not necessarily dependent on OpenStack Keystone. So kind of in a nutshell, the important factor here is make sure you stop all OpenStack services, but leave Galera up and running. So with all the services stopped, you want to confirm that with PCS status. And then the, the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I want to drop any connections to my database, right? Since I'm going to do a restore, I don't want to have incoming connections coming in at the same time, possibly modifying my database. So you can simply uh, drop connections using an IP tables rule. And then finally, um, on this one step here, the Galera, you want to disable control from Pacemaker, and, and this version at least. Uh, and the reason for that was, if I would shut down my database, which you're going to have to do uh, manually to, in order to restore it, um, Pacemaker would automatically see that, hey, this database is down right now, so it would automatically try to start the database back up. So in order to not have Pacemaker try to restart the database when I don't want it to, I'm actually going to have it, uh, I'm going to essentially have that resource unmanaged. And then, of course, finally, on your compute nodes, you want to essentially stop any services, uh, any compute services. So in this in the rel OPSEC 8, it was um, the Silometer Compute Service and the NOAA Compute Service. Okay. So now that it's the MariaDB is not, uh, the Galera cluster is not managed, I want to go in to each controller. I want to shut down the MariaDB database. And then this is the part where I'm going to essentially recreate my uh, MariaDB, uh, essentially with the whole new MySQL. So in this kind of snippet here, I'm essentially moving my old Maria DB data directories, creating a brand new varlib MySQL, uh, setting the correct ownership permissions. I'm going to use MySQL underscore underscore DB to install a new data directory under the using the MySQL user, and then set the correct uh, ownership, and then restore the SE Linux um, settings for it. So once I've done this, I have a pretty much a clean of clean MariaDB database that has no other information except for the MySQL schema. So on each controller node, you're going to log in um, uh, to the MySQL, and you're going to create a, a user so you can log into what we call cluster check. So essentially, I'm granting all permissions to cluster check on that particular local host, and I'm not defining it a password. You can if you want to. And then once I get out, out of that, I want to shut down that particular database. And what I want to do is, now that I've created all this and it has that particular user that I'm looking for, I want to go back to having Galera managed because now I want actually my MariaDB to be up and running. So PCS resource manage Galera, PCS resource clean up Galera. And the goal here is when you clean up, you want to ensure that when you do a PCS status and you grab for Galera, that your master node actually shows all your different controllers on there. So you'll see this master's array and has over cloud controller zero, control, over cloud controller one, over cloud controller two. That's what you're looking for. If you by chance see two of them in there and you don't see the third one in there, you probably want to like uh, essentially try to clean up your, your environment. You, and it takes a little time for it to happen. It doesn't happen right away. So when you do this step, realize that you probably have to wait a couple, sometimes a couple minutes for it to actually put, put all the different controllers back into the Calera cluster. So once everything's back in your Galera, uh, once all your three controllers are, or X number of controllers are back in your Galera cluster, uh, and you have your MariaDB database in a clean state, uh, last thing you want to do is essentially uh, put in your OpenStack database timestamp.sql file back into your MariaDB. So in this case, using the MySQL command, I can simply MySQL dash u root, pass in the SQL statement, the next one is going to pass in all those users and permissions that I initially captured when doing my backup. So the MySQL dash u root under uh, less than sign grants date.sql. I want to test that 
uh, the cluster check is working as it should on each controller node, so I can do that locally with cluster check. And then using uh, X init D, uh, I can use the curl command, and this essentially will provide you output where say, hey, Galera cluster is synced or it's not synced. So the goal is to make sure that when you run this curl command for all your controllers, everything is synced up as it should be after you've done the, uh, essentially the restore of your OpenStack database. And last but not least, for the for the MariaDB, for the MariaDB, you want to en enable database connections uh, back into your database. So you want to actually drop the the input uh, command from your IP tables that was actually dropping database ports or database connections of through that port 3306. So uh, the Mongo database. So MariaDB is up and running. Uh, essentially, you have now uh, uh, where you need your Mongo database and you need your Redis database in the config files, right? So Mongo database, um, things to keep in mind, you want to always use primary node. So you want to log into your primary node. You want to make sure that you're not uh, taking in any write requests. So there's a, a, an evaluate command that's going to stop write requests from being taken in as you're doing the import. Uh, you want to ensure that you have your backup for your different databases that are associated with your Mongo database. So in the, in the world of Red Hat OpenStack 8, that's the Solometer database and the admin database. You want to drop any existing databases if you had issues with them or, or you're doing this whole restore process. And then you want to use the Mongo restore command to do the, the, the restore. And then finally, the evaluate command goes back to a true setting to actually take in write requests. So, what do those commands look like? So log into controller. Before, we had just the uh, Galera cluster uh, service up and running. But now, since we're trying to restore the Mongo database, we're going to also have the MongoD service up and running. So PCS resource enable MongoD. I'm then going to log in to my prim primary node, uh, so the Mongo host bind IP port uh, 27017. And we have that primary node information from when we were doing the backup. And here, what I'm going to do is there's a, in using the Mongo command, you can actually set, uh, so it's connecting to my host, its port, and the dash dash eval. So essentially, this evaluate command, uh, sh.set balancer state false, is what's going to ensure that no writes are happening to the Mongo database since I'm going to import my, um, my databases into Mongo. So here, connect to your Mongo database. You are connected to the triple O colon primary, right? That's make sure that you're not primary, not secondary. And here I'm going to switch into the admin, use, uh, admin database. And then um, I'm going to come drop that database. You drop a database using the db.dropdatabase function. And essentially, once I've dropped that admin database that was currently living there, I want to also drop the Solometer database. And once I drop that, if I do a command show DBS, you can actually see that your databases have been dropped from your, from your Mongo um, replica set. So in order to restore it, you want to use Mongo restore. And Mongo restore, pretty, pretty simple command to use. Mongo restore your host, your port, dash D is going to be the name of your database. So in this case, I had the admin database, the Solomon database. And essentially, you're passing then where the location of your Mongo restore was. So hopefully, you back this up to some remote location. You either have access to that remote location to, from your overcloud, or you copied it from your, your remote location onto your overcloud node. And then finally, for the Mongo database, the last step is to reset that evaluation command now from a false state back to a true state. And this is going to allow you to, to once again, take write requests on the, on the MongoDB cluster. And um, so with the Mongo database up and running, one of the last steps here is now restoring your OpenStack config files. So you have all that, all the different services that your OpenStack environment is going to have. You want to now start up all the different OpenStack services that weren't started, because initially you, you only had the Galera and Mongo up and running. And then once everything's up and running, you want to go to your compute nodes and start all those services that you um, had disabled on your compute nodes. So, um, essentially, to do that, uh, you have your location of where your backup is. It's a tar file. Here, I copied it to my, my slash directory. And then, essentially, I'm, I'm untarring this directory. Now, remember, when you untar it, you're essentially overriding anything you had existing. So keep that in mind. 
And then, of course, uh, with OpenStack 8, RHEL OpenStack 8, uh, enabling the OpenStack Keystone service is going to enable most of my OpenStack services. And then the PCS resource enable on OpenStack Accelerometer and so forth is going to enable everything else that OpenStack Keystone didn't re-enable. And, and the same applies for different versions of OpenStack. You want to enable all the different services back up and running. And then uh, once all your controller nodes are up and running, all the services are up, you want to then start all your different compute services that you stop. So in this case, it was the OpenStack Solometer compute service and the OpenStack Nova compute service. And finally, that's pretty much my presentation. In, so after this slide, and, and I, I'm hoping you guys can get a copy of it, um, I put these bonus uh, slides on here. So essentially, if you're running Red Hat OpenStack platform and you want to know how to back it up and restore it, I've kind of given simpler, similar slides to what you saw for the overcloud, for the undercloud. And that's my presentation. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. So if uh, you have any questions, I will try to duck and dodge uh, as much as possible. But if you have any questions, feel free to go to the mic, and um, we'll go from there. <coughs> yeah, would you, mind, would you mind going to the mic so that we can get it on, on recording? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it was. Hi, I'm yours. I work with Cisco. Um, my question was, how does this all relate to automation? Because if we have a big event, what we just do is we rerun the automation, and except for the data part, which okay. I agree with. Okay. But the configuration, everything is just restored by rerunning the previous version of whatever you had in automation. So, I mean, the way we were looking at this is essentially you're doing a, a rollback of your environment, right? So. The way I understand it, if you're doing this automation, you're kind of doing a, is it like a brand new environment or? I mean, you, if it's virtualized, right, you either blow away the VM, but if it's config based, you can just rerun it, right? If it's item potent, it will just roll back your, your configuration. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest factor for, for the backups is as long as you can get, well, I think because you're backing up the databases, right? There might be some changes in within the configuration files themselves. So recreating it might not have everything that you're expecting. So I think the safest way, at least, would be to make sure you have a backup of all your all the different databases that you need, and do have all the configuration files stored somewhere else. As far as automating it, I think it's just a matter of uh, automating that that process to then pump it back to the different overcloud nodes. Could you give an example, though, of configuration that wouldn't sit in your configuration management or system? Um, no, not on top of my head, to be honest. But I, I, my concern would be that there might not be there might be a change that you might be that might be overlooked. I mean, I'm not. I'm well, then, then you have a bigger problem in your change management, right? Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't have a good, an a good answer for you on that one. I'm sorry. No, no worries. OK, thank you. Yeah. When you update uh, even a minor version, the Python libraries are sometimes updated. Restoring the configuration files won't necessarily restore the Python libraries. Don't you need to back up the uh, versions of the Python libraries? Well, whatever's, um, at least when I was doing the, the, the update for it, essentially with the rollback, if there's any changes happening, I would assume the, the, yum, the yum rollback, the undo, would put it back to the, its original um, version. So, any, so essentially when you do the update, it goes, it goes into the overcloud node, it goes and updates all the different packages that it needs to, and then it goes off and runs the, the update process, right? So in, at least in the version I ran, when I did the yum restore, puts all the packages back to its original state, where I had a, a, a working version of, I guess, Python or, or any other packages. So I think, I think that's covered with the, with the yum uh, rollback. Now, if, you're, if, if you're pulling directly from source or something, you would need to arrange to, to do that. This, this assumes that you have a package management system to take care of. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Source. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Um, 
Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it for you coming and um, have a great OpenStack. <laughs>